Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org. Here with SiliconANGLE TV's wall-to-wall -wall continuous coverage of EMC World 2012. And we're going to be talking to a bunch of service providers here in this afternoon. Joining me is Matthew Yeager, CTO of Colt. Hello. Came from across the pond all the uh, way over to Vegas. We did, it was a, it was a nice 13 hour jaunt from uh, Heathrow to, uh, to Las Vegas. So yeah. what, what I always get excited about is uh, there, there's people that I've known through the Twitter, mm -hmm. the social media channels. Uh, Matthew and I have known each other for a while and the first mm -hmm. time we met each other in person was yeah, you know, two minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. So uh, here we are in person, kind of, kind of like to share those conversations that we've had through social okay. media and mm -hmm. talking online with, with our broader community so we can kind of extract the signal from the noise okay. and really understand you know, what, what's going on here. So okay. yeah, Wikibon, you know, we really think there's huge opportunities uh, for the service provider market really is kind of the new channel, and especially if we look at converged infrastructure yeah. in general, yeah. and storage specifically, service providers are playing a really large part of that. Mm -hmm. um, so on, here on, uh, on theCUBE, we, we like to use sports analogies some, sometimes. Okay. So right. in the States here, you know, we say for baseball, sure. uh, convergence I'd say, converged infrastructures, you know, kind of the second, third inning, we're kind of getting in, the, the pitchers hopefully loosened up, so do, do you have a better sports analogy for us? As uh. where we are with converged <laughs> infrastructure? Uh, wow, okay. Um, that's a really good question. Um, I came over, when we were coming over, we had 13 hours, so you know, obviously there's a lot to a uh, lot of time to, to do something. Um, but I watched uh, Moneyball. Yep. Um, so yeah, it was myself and a few other people from, from Colt uh, that came over to EMC World. Uh, and I watched it not once, not twice, but three times um, wow. in a row. I was just, I, I was so blown away by, by, yeah, by we, that. We, we, we love Moneyball. Actually, we've had Billy Bean himself. Have you really? On the cube, I've there, there are very few kind of sports people that I would want to go and actually meet, you know, in the flesh. Uh, but Billy Bean is absolutely one of them. Anyway, uh, I, I went and and we were talking uh, with, you know, people inside Colt on the plane. You know, you really need to see this, and they all had kind of the same feedback. Um, but the, the I guess the analogy from from our perspective around service providers, I think um, you, you're right. The sports analogies do work because they tell you an awful lot about the culture. Uh, that, that you're in, uh, not just the, the the customer culture, but then also the market culture. Uh, with inside baseball, uh, not to take anything away from American sports, but uh, the reality is that you know you, you've got the, the two to three innings, and the, you know you can you can kind of be rubbish the entire match, and then you get to the end, and uh, even in Moneyball, you know there's you like you send your big lumper up, and there's two outs and whatever, and then he comes up and he whacks one over the fence, and the bases were loaded and all of a sudden you win. Um, I don't think it's, it's terribly realistic for the service provider community uh, to believe that, that that analogy would work. So the analogy that, that we tend to use, certainly with Inside Cold, is probably more along the lines of, of rugby. Um, you know, the scrum methodology, if I don't pass the ball from one to the other, there's no way for me to score a try. Um, you know, how do I you know, put my, my folks on the, on the pitch to, to score a try? The other, the other analogy that we tend to use a lot is, is cricket. Um, you know, England have beat uh, Australia now several times uh, in the Ashes, um, and really, you know, the, when they started winning, uh, and we hadn't won the Ashes for like a considerable period of time, um, but when they they started winning against Australia, it was because they had a proper end-to-end -end strategy on how they were going to win those Test matches. And there's, you know, what three to five Test matches in a series. Each Test match goes five days. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for any sport that has a tea interval um, and, and, and lunch. Um, but you know, they, they well, rugby has beer, right? Rugby has beer. Uh, you can't do anything pretty much with football anymore. There's, there's no beer. There's no alcohol. Uh, but um, you have to have a proper strategy, and you execute against that strategy. And when you start listening to the guys that won the, the Ashes originally in 2005, give or take, um, they had been preparing for two years before they actually went to Australia. And you know, it, it's they were able to pivot whenever something happened during the match that maybe they weren't quite expecting. Because they had that strategy, and, and probably more importantly, they trusted one another properly as a team, um, they were able to pivot very quickly and react to what, whatever the Australians were up to. So I think from Colt's perspective, um, we're, we're, we believe that certainly with inside the service provider market or community, um, probably the best thing to do is, is to have a, a platform, a structured platform, um, that is that is skeletal. That that isn't kind of the fully baked thing. Um, service catalog um, ingredients that can be selected um, off the shelf and then constructed to make a to make a product. So that you can kind of react to the customer's needs in a very very agile way. I think um, 
you know, agile methodology has been something that's been around for quite a while with inside the software industry, uh, very well known, but go into the average service provider or the average service community and start to talk about Scrum and they don't even know kind of where to start. So, uh, you know, our sports analogies I think tend to be along the lines of um, what, would what would happen if I took an MBA and a geek and I kind of crossed them Across the DNA, what, what would that look like? And, okay. and that's what would be an Okay, so, 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 so Matthew, uh, you know, definitions are something we often struggle with in the industry. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, CTO types sometimes have, have a tendency to, you know, it be, be very broad. So I'm, I'm wondering if I can put you on the spot here. Sure. Um, service providers, you know, what does it mean to be a service provider? And can you keep it in a tweet format or at least, like you know, 140 a, characters. you know, a kind of a short, what, what, what is a service provider today in, in the mission there? Okay, can I keep it, can you give me two tweets? Uh, go. All right, the, I'll, I'll, I'll do your deal. Uh, the first tweet will be about service providers in general. The second tweet will be about Colt's journey. Um, this, the first tweet would be um, service will always trump technology. Service, you know, the clue's in the title, service provider. So, you know, we used to have resellers and then I think customers cotton on to the fact that uh, you weren't really providing a huge amount of value. You were you you didn't make anything. So if there wasn't so, value added in the var. <laughs> well, but what what simply putting um, margin on top of something that you don't make right. and delivering it more quickly than someone else, one could argue that's not really value add. Um, service provider, um, and it's going to be different by the way in in each vertical in each country. But I think from my perspective, uh, if you had to put me on the spot, I would say the the clues in the title and anybody that isn't properly providing service absolutely has something to worry about. The tweet that's very specific to Colt would be our evolution uh, is, is very much along the lines of evolving from a product uh, and partner-centric organization to a service and customer-centric organization. And what that means is, um, people have asked me, does that mean that you're going to move away from VMware, you're going to move away from EMC and go to more open source things? Um, the partnership with EMC, the partnership with Cisco, with VMware, is even more important than it was yesterday. But, is it a supply chain relationship, or is it a proper partnership? Yep. And, and, and defining that and, and kind of working through that is a lot more complicated All than... Right. than so, so, so Matthew, think. last week, EMC yeah. made an announcement on their VMAX for service providers. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me about kind of your and Colton engagement on that, and uh, what, what you think it really means for the industry? I think, um, yeah, the, um, as you know, we were part of the, the actual announcement. You, you were know, in the itself. press release, I believe. Yeah, we were, we were in the press release. Um, and initially, you kind of think, well, you know, great, so we were in the, the PR, and uh, people you know, see us as forward thinking, and hey, that's all goodness. Uh, we learned, um, I, I, I want to get the number right, I think it was something like 66,000 page hits on that in the first 12 hours alone. So you kind of think, okay, you know, we must be on to something here collectively if people are, you, know, you announce this thing and you think, okay, well, it's not overly profound, it's VMAX for service providers. But actually, you know, the impact I think for, for SPs and certainly the impact for customers, um, we see much more quickly than I ever anticipated, our customers wanting to transform and evolve their internal IT infrastructure, their internal IT department to behave more like a service provider. They don't have service catalogs often, they don't have a lot of orchestration, uh, OSS, BSS, metering, these are all things that they would like to do, but then when you start to look at individual products, VNX, Data Domain, um, Avamar, you know, all these products, how do you then take those products and then fit them into a service catalog? How do you fit it into price per unit? It becomes really, really complicated. On the other hand, if you then have VMAX SP, um, so you know, my own personal opinion, and I'll probably get shot uh, for what I'm about to say, but I think you've known me well. N nobody's listening. Don't nobody's worry. listening. Um, nobody's watching Just my tweets. Just a conversation. We want to share the information. <laughs> so, so my parents will be upset, right? Yes. Um, I, I believe that the marketing team on both sides. Uh, you know, we have a part to play in this as well. I think the marketing teams watered down the announcement a little bit, um, and I'm not entirely sure why because I think the announcement was absolutely about a partner for the first time listening to its customers, to its partners, and saying, yep, we get that. We need to open up the platform at an API level. We need to properly provide price per unit. We need to properly provide analytics on your consumption, predictive analytics, and so on and so on and so on. So almost, we want to give you a platform that allows you to start to think about what a private Amazon would look like. So for us, 
you know, we had approached DMC, you know, I approached them better than nine months ago and said, this is what we're thinking of doing. Fully expecting them to look at us and, and think, you're really off on one. And in fact, they had been having very parallel conversations internally. So they, they were able to connect us with Robin uh, Brom, uh, Fidel Maruso, you know, people that, you know, I, I kind of expected I'd get a call in a couple months and they were onto us within kind of 24 hours. Well, what do you mean by that? And, and it, it, some things we've needed slight kind of course corrections and frankly, some things have been complete 180s uh, through an iterative process of then speaking with our customers and saying, if we collectively did it this way, what would you think? How does this positively solve some of your business issues and provide the, the services that you're looking for. So I, I personally feel that the announcements uh, around the VSP platform and what EMC is looking to do, not only important for the service provider community, but in the long term will be absolutely critical to the enterprise community as they start to transform themselves internally to behave more like internal uh, service yes, providers. So, so, so great, great points there, Matthew. One of the things we look at enterprises today, you need to be able to kind of be more agile, look more yeah. cloud-like, or like a service provider, their own organization. One of the big questions that comes up is when I think of really the web scale uh, deployments, or even most people think service providers, mm -hmm. the, the immediate reaction is commodity. Uh -huh. Commodity hardware, sure. you know, kind of, you know, Google, you know, has, you know, just GFS is very specific, specific thing. Most yeah. enterprises don't look like that, yeah. and you know, service providers ha have varied architectures. So, okay. you know, where is the differentiation in the marketplace, and you know, wh why does why does Vmax play into that? That's not something that kind of comes to mind typically. Okay, no, that's a good question. Um, I think you know, if you kind of if you kind of step back, um, I believe. You know, we, we were very open, partnership, you know, you have to be, uh, my, my grandmother used to say, you can be married, you can be right. Um, and, and we decided that with EMC, we, we wanted a marriage, but we weren't quite sure what that looked like. So we needed to not be right and just be completely open and transparent about what we thought. And one of the first things we said was, you simply cannot take enterprise product and try and retrofit it for the service provider community. Um, and that's, in the initial tranche, I think most people look at VMAX, you know, enterprise class storage, and, right. and the immediate thoughts are expensive, expensive, expensive. What we're finding though is that um, as it's you know, kind of evolving, I think people are starting to understand enterprise class, enterprise class storage, enterprise class cloud, really means that it has certain attributes, it has you know, security, it has data mobility, it has price per unit, elasticity. Um, so I do believe that EMC is evolving the conversation to the positive, that VMAX isn't just you know, this really expensive platform. There are service providers, uh, Google, Amazon, um, Apple, iCloud. Um, there are people that invest a significant amount of revenue in being able to take pizza boxes or, right. or take their own servers. Uh, the, the problem with that is that if you look at Google and Amazon just as two case points, they have spent a considerable amount of money and time to develop their own grid architecture. The only way you could really think about doing that is if you had um, grid software that allowed you to take pizza boxes and, and uh, make them behave as a contiguous whole. Um, you know, the, the white paper, uh, the, the, the data center as a computer that the Google guys wrote, I think it was six or seven years ago. They've, they've been very open and transparent about how you would do it, but to properly commercialize uh, that software, I can't see Amazon or Google anytime soon turning around to me, you, the service provider community, uh, enterprises and say, hey, do you know what, here you go, here's some, here's some open source software so you can create your own grid. So you've got to be able to solve the problem um, in another way in the first instance. The, the barrier to entry for us, uh, the amount of R&D that would be required to physically start to think about swinging for the fences if we're going to use sports analogies, is considerable. On the other hand, you could turn to your partner in EMC and you would say, look, this is platform, VMAX SP, it's got scale out capabilities, but, there's always a but, I don't want to consume Atmos, Isilon, data domain, they're, they're products to you, they're products to the enterprise, they're attributes to me as a service provider. So open it up, API, allow me to talk to those things up and down you know, through the stack, if you will, through the API. Allow me to consume based on a, on a profile. Uh, I don't want to buy DAE shelves and I just want to consume based on whether you call it T1, T2, T3, gold, platinum, bronze, don't really care. But I want to consume based on a profile and attributes and not the other thing. So, is it perfect? No, but I absolutely believe that um, it's no hyperbole. EMC is by a country mile well ahead of its competition. I don't see NetApp, I don't see HDS, I don't see IBM, HP. No one is thinking this way at present. And it's not for a lack of us 
contacting them and trying and, and having these conversations. Okay, uh, interesting. So, you know, I, I've talked to quite a few service providers. Most of them are very multi-vendor uh, on how they do things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Colt, very bullish on the EMC relationship. Absolutely. Good to see you, Matthew. Appreciate you joining us, helping peel the onion a little bit about the changing face of the service provider market. Uh, look forward to seeing more as this evolved and as always, uh, connecting with you. So, uh, we will be back with EMC World continuous coverage on SiliconANGLE TV right after this.